welcome to the MVP show. Today we're chatting with Sarah Lagerquist. Hopefully I pronounced that right. You'll see in the show whether I did or did not shortly. Anyhow, she's made it her mission to uh, focus on the power platform around low-code or no-code solutions. Not saying that she doesn't believe that there's time for code, but she's very focused on, as much as possible, using no-code solutions. Full show notes can be found at nz365guide.com forward slash 133. Now let's get on with the show. Hey, Sarah, welcome to the MVP show. Thank you. Good to have you on here and and explore your story to becoming an MVP. I'm excited to uncover everything I don't know about the story, but tell all us my secrets. all your secrets, exactly, who you bribed. Um, to, you know, <laughs> and we know, of course, there's no bribery involved. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not uh, intimating anything like that. It all happened, but tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, um, where do you live? What part of the world do you hail from? And what's awesome about where you come from? I'm from Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, what's awesome about living here? I would say that we have the all the four seasons. So I get snow in the winter times. I get the nice spring, the hot summer, and the cozy autumn all all in one place. Nice, nice. And have you lived there all your life? I have. I've been on a couple of trips where I've been away for a couple of months, but uh, never, never permanently. Only. And where did you go? Did you go to London for a bit? Uh, never to stay. I've been, it's a weird, it's a weird story. I'm not going to go into it. I've been to Cardiff for a couple of months. Um, I went to Kenya for a couple of months and I've been to Spain for a couple of months and also been traveling Southeast Asia for a couple of months. Wow. Very so. cool. Very cool. Okay. So you have traveled around a bit. I knew for some reason I had this feeling that I knew you'd been in the United Kingdom for a bit longer than just a visit. Yes, yes. When I was 19, I ended up in Cardiff. <laughs> so anyhow, I first met you, oh, it would have been November last year, would it? Yeah, I, Stockholm I think, event. Yeah, we're at Stockholm event, 365 Saturday. And and I think of a conversation we had outside of a bar that night <laughs> um, where, you know, you were apprehensive about a speaking engagement you're going to do in Scotland in the early part of the year, which we both spoke at. And and then I look at where you are now, and it's kind of like it seems in this short period of time, less than 12 months, the world has massively changed for you. Can you tell me a bit about it? Yeah, so when you first met me, it was like my first or second speaker engagement. Uh, so yeah, I was uh, quite nervous, didn't know if I wanted to continue to do it or if I was any good or anything. I've been asked to go to uh, Scotland to do uh, a session there and I was very well nervous that I was only there because I happened to be a woman and they wanted to have 50-50 uh, male and female speakers. Um, but that event in Scotland was like something happened that time um it was so much fun the audience were super engaged it was um everything went perfectly it it was just super fun and after that I've been asked to go to Munich I've been to Texas I've been to Amsterdam uh speaking at different events and I realized that I really love it now. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. And so, you know, back then, I, I mean, we never discussed MVP at all. Um, well, well, we had a smoke or two outside uh, that bar, but I do remember that, you know, this apprehension around speaking and the reason for going into it, obviously a lot's changed. Now, when did you, when did you feel that, you know, MVP might be something that um, you would like to get involved with? The whole thing has happened so quick, so I'm not really sure I ever uh, got the time to actually aim for it or or put my head to, like, this is what I wanted to do. Um, I did get 
a lot of MVP friends, and it was frustrating to hear that uh, you you got knowledge about something that you can't tell me, or um, you got invited to a meeting that I can't go to, and this is NDA, and this is NDA, and I can't. Uh, that was super frustrating. Uh, <laughs> so that's when I realized, like, okay, maybe, um, maybe I do want this because there's a lot of good benefits um, about it. But then I got nominated in May, I think, end of May or something, and everything happened so quick. I I hardly had time to uh, wrap my head around it. Yeah. Okay. Who nominated you? Uh, Chris Huntingford. Chris Huntingford. Good man, that guy, right? Good man. Yep. <laughs> He's um, awesome. <laughs> I uh, I let slip the other day. Actually, it might have been on my YouTube video that I talked about being passed out at um, in a hotel room with Nick Dolman, um, <laughs> and 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 you laugh because you actually were in the room as well. I was, um, I was um, uh, for that. So there you go, uh, listeners. I, I reveal more of my shame um, uh, to you, but anyhow, tell us about like, you, you have in a very short amount of time gone from, you know, um, if you're like not having a profile in the community to having a very high profile, do you think that's predominantly come around via your proactive speaking engagements? I think that has a very big part to it. You, when you do speaking um, sessions, you meet so many people face to face and it's easier for them and for you to reach out and talking on social media after that than if I would have just done my blog um, articles, I'm not sure I would have gotten as many to reach out and be social with me on social media. Yeah, 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 yeah. What what's your number one social media channel for the community related stuff that you do? I won't talk about those other channels that you're on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I what? think it, it would be Twitter. It actually. would be Twitter. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm finding Twitter has a resurgence. You know, I've been on it for a very long time um, since before you're born, and and I've noticed I have noticed recently that there's been a massive upswing in you know community engagement on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I didn't join that long ago. It was, it was actually this community that um, got me to join. So I'm only following uh, things that has to do with Power Platform or people who, um, who I know through, through well, work, I guess. But it's more than work. Uh, but uh, so I don't do like football, follow football people or politics or anything. Um, yeah, why would you, right? Why would you? <laughs> no, but all my feed is is Power Platform. So so that's maybe why I feel that it's <laughs> such a big platform for me because, yeah. Nice. Now, your personal brand, as I see it in the community, is very much around this concept of no-code customization. Yes, I would say I'm a no-code advocate. Excellent. How did you get to that point? Tell me the journey you went on. Well, I, well, my background is that I'm a user from the beginning. I was a customer, a Jonas Raps customer, actually. Um, yeah. And uh, when I was a customer, I learned how to do a few things on my own. And when I got recruited to, to work with a partner, uh, I was super worried that I wasn't being technical enough, or uh, I didn't have any programming background. I did an evening course just to to learn like what strings are and integers and stuff wow. like that. Wow, wow, um, that's I'm impressed that you went and did an evening class to kind of understand those concepts. Yeah, because I was so scared, but I I so didn't have to go to that evening class because it's not what it's about. And um, I'm I'm a person who wants to. I can ask for help, but I would prefer if I can solve it myself. And not having a programming background made me like really stubborn to find no code solutions because those I could do myself. Um, and then I was also I've been in in with the Dynamics and Power Platform for uh, almost six years, a bit more, uh, and. It's kind of obvious. I started on CRM 2011 that we're moving towards uh, more and more no-code features 
definitely. So it's it's going like it's becoming more and more easy for me to find solutions. And I've been in so many projects that I also know what happens if you implement too much code. Um, so we're not going gonna go into that discussion because it's huge and there's gray zones and and I don't think I I'm not saying you should never use code, which many people think I do. That's that's not at all what I'm saying. I'm saying that um, look at the no code options first. That's that's what I'm saying. I like it, and I and I and I, and I get what you mean. But and I like that you positively stand for something like that. And and that you can defend your position quite strongly, which is which is fantastic. But I do not understand what you mean about gray areas. But to, one one of the questions I get a lot from from the audience is, I'm not technical, so can I ever be an MVP? That's that's probably one of the the most common questions I get. So there's a lot of people that look enviously on at becoming an MVP, but they go, I'm not a coder, I'm not a developer. So does that mean I can't become an MVP? What what would your kind of thoughts or or what would you tell people like that? I, I would tell them that they very much can be. I'm I'm the living proof of it. Um I I still don't know how to code. Uh and I got to be an MVP even though I, I don't know that. There are so many more areas where you can contribute to the community without it being how to write a plugin or uh, a JavaScript that solves the requirements. Um, some of my focus is even not only doing like no code concepts with uh, dynamics, it's also um, how to actually gather the requirements uh, in such a quality way that uh, the result becomes a good result, a good project, a good implementation. Um, sharing that type of knowledge can also lead you into um, not having to take the technical route to becoming successful. Mm, 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 mm. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. So back on the speaking area, you've done seven speaking engagements since I met you in November. Now, that that's quite a bit, right? And and I even see that from this point forward, you've got another three speaking engagements already booked for this year, going into next year. So that that's impressive. Which out of the events you've been to, if you if I could get you to pick just one event, and it's not allowed to be in your home city of Stockholm, um, what has been the 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 big, if you like, standout of these events you've gone to? What's probably been some key highlights you've observed in those those ones that you've done this year so far? Uh, so Glasgow was, uh, without a doubt, my most amazing moment because, like I said, the, the audience was so engaging. It was like they were nervous with me. They were clapping with me. They were uh, cocky with me when someone was rude in the audience. They were, like, with me all the way. And I got tons of amazing feedback afterwards. And my former speaking engagement before Glasgow was, they were all right. They were good. I got some feedback. So you're talking about Texas. <laughs> but yeah, Texas and Stockholm. Um, but that the Glasgow e event was the one where I could be myself and relaxed and joke when I was up there. I've never been able to... Uh, be funny or what I think is funny uh, before that and after that things just uh, I just got more comfortable with it and it's been better ever since nice nice what was it like speaking in Munich in a German country where you know you talk about and you know uh, having your humor as part of it and and you know, German people have not necessarily known for their humor. Feel free to connect me. Correct me if I'm wrong, audience. But <laughs> how? Um, what are your, what are your thoughts on Munich? Well, I was nervous about that because after Glasgow, I realized that well, that's part of my success doing some jokes, and so part of my sessions are usually I speak for 15 minutes and then I go into a demo. Um, my first 15 minutes were kind of quiet. Then I realized that there's a few things to, that can make almost any audience laugh. And it's if you swear, if you say <laughs> fuck, or if you say some, if you swear, that, that 
And if you blame it on Microsoft, if you say something bad about Microsoft, they will also laugh. So, <laughs> so wow, I so got, interesting. yeah, I got that those two in. And when I was ready for my demo, the audience was quite relaxed. I also had some British people in the audience who helped with laughing. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, it it was good. It took a while, but they they warmed up to me. They got used to me uh, well in the session. That's good. That's good. Where where do you think you're going? You know, like if you, if you could look twenty four months ahead from now, twelve twenty four months ahead. Where do you think your career is going to grow to um, based on reflecting on the last 12 months, if you like? Oh, that's very interesting. I got that question yesterday. Um, yeah, where, where I was, where I, I would think I would be in five years. And if someone would ask me five years ago, I would never have thought that I'd be here today. Um, so I, I have no idea. I've always kind of gone with the flow. Um if I find something I like and I think it's fun, I'll try to go that way. So, so I think I'll, that is my success factor. I should just, if I find something that engaged me, I, I should go, go do that. Go mm. with that. Mm. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. What recommendations would you have for people considering or wanting to become MVPs themselves? Uh, only focus on things that you actually find interesting. I see that some people might look at maybe like new release, new things that's being released and blog and talk about them, even though they are not very engaged in, in that technology or that function or whatever and they lose interest and there's nothing after that. I think it's very important for you if you if you're going to keep this up and if you're actually going to have the strength to do this after work and on weekends which is practically what what is needed, uh you really have to be like it, really like it, not yeah. just fake like it. Yeah, yeah, so true, so true. What are you looking forward to most about Orlando? I know you're going to be speaking there. Um, that's the big, you know, the biggest user group summit. What are you most looking forward? Well, I'm doing my first all talk session without a demo. So I'm looking forward to seeing how many jokes I can squeeze in. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> how, how that will go since English is obviously not my first language and it's usually around the demo part I start relaxing. Uh, so doing an all talk uh, session will be uh, very exciting. I'm looking forward to the personal developing that that would mean yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. The journey that you're going to go on as part of it. Um, are you entering the, the oh, what's it called, the pub quiz there? Yes, that's my plan. If my session is not at the same time, I it's, will it's definitely not, go. It's not, as in your boss got me to move my session, which <laughs> is, is the pub quiz, so that he could make sure you guys could get in with the team. Well, then we're definitely there. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I think you got a fighting chance because you, uh, you Swedes seem to be well educated. As in, you've got all your bases covered by your team. Yeah, we got a developer. We got um, the non-developer, which is me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who knows everything? <laughs> Gustav who knows everything exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly, exactly. When do you reckon his wife's going to become an MVP? Um, that's a difficult question. Maybe she needs to start putting some content out before. Yeah, but like the thing is, she, you know, she, you know, we say that Gustav organized um the Stockholm Saturday event, but really, was it him or? Oh, she was very well engaged. She is. Definitely, she, yeah. I, she's, I think uh, she was a key organizer, right? She, she loves CRM or Dynamics Power Platform as much as he does, I think. They're a very, yeah. So true. Okay, anything else you want to add before we get on to some quick fire questions that are going to put you on the spot? No, shoot. Okay, here's the first one. These are deep. These are deep. This is, you know, normally I would say you need a drink or two before answering these, but anyhow, let's let's have a go. Here's the deep one. Okay, what were the three biggest turning points in your life? In my life. In your life, the three biggest turning points in your life. <laughs> 
uh, being born is one of them. Nice, nice. <laughs> At least um, you can't say dying because we aren't there yet. No. <laughs> uh, uh, getting my first job, just getting out there instead of uh, studying, which I've never been very good at. Um, and uh, getting my own place, I think. Yeah. Interesting. I thought getting a dog would have been one of them, but doesn't feature high enough, eh? No, he means a lot, but it's not life-changing in that way. Valid. Okay, here's your random question. You ready for your random question? <laughs> okay. Which piece are you when you play Monopoly? I want to be the small iron. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it has a nice grip to it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. fair enough. That's the best one. Okay, are you ready for your would you rather? <gasps> oh, my God, yes. Would you rather date someone you love or date someone who loves you? Ugh. Maybe date someone who loves me. Nice. Well, nice. Um, but I'd be scared to death. <laughs> if someone likes me more than I like them though but yeah I would choose that <laughs> okay here's your life question what's something you believe earlier in your career but think about differently now hmm what can that be um you wouldn't change would you change anything about um, about, about your career not about your life but just about your career would you have done anything different no, because I think all my decisions and mistakes led me to what to, I am today. I agree. So, yeah. no. I I, yeah, I believe the same thing. Yeah. It's, it's good. If you could write a book, what would it be about? Growing my own food. Growing your own weed? No, food. Oh, food, food, food. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, yes, growing no, your own food. Right. Yeah. <laughs> do you know, I'm going to do that one day. I, I am going to do that one day. Do you do anything now? No. As in, well, I've got a, I've got a, a mint plant. Does that count? I grow mint. No. No, <laughs> right? that doesn't count. Just to put in my mojitos and my gin and tonics. <laughs> I have tons. I have like 20 plants of tomatoes, four cucumbers. I have like huge veggie patch. Wow, wow. I I've, love it. That's so cool. I'm so impressed that you're actually already doing it. Yeah, I want to do more. I'm just planning every year how to be more efficient. Nice, nice. I, I have a, a piece of land back in New Zealand, about an, a an acre and a half, and I am so looking forward to one day being back there and actually growing my garden. I have, I've, I've even designed my garden. I, I, yeah, I, I know what I want to do with it. I, 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 you know, yeah, I'm looking forward oh, to that. having that much piece of land, the possibilities are enormous. Yeah. I think I think it should be good. What's the best compliment you've ever received? Probably something about my brains instead of looks. Any is, can you remember any specific one? No. I think I repress them whenever I hear them. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's so hard, isn't it, to take a compliment? It's really really hard. It makes yeah. you feel very awkward. Sarah, it's been great to have on you on the show. Before we go, I'm going to try and say your last name. I <gasps> oh, please do. Uh, the way I say it is is Lagerquist. Is that close enough? It's close. I I would accept that. I would answer if you call me that. Yeah, but it's not right. Yeah, and let's let's give the audience one. Oh, okay. What is it then? Let, the, let, let I'll let you tell the audience what your real last name is. Lagerquist. Lager, it's like drinking a lager with a quist on the end of it. Yeah, kind of. But you pronounce the uh, uh, letters more, like lagerquist. Nice, nice. Now let let's give the audience one little other insight into your personality. Mm -hmm. And that's around your first name. You spell it S A R A, but you've also play with that sometimes, don't you? With, with my first name, no. Yeah, I, I thought you've told me that you've gone and used many different versions of that to confuse people from time to time. <laughs> no, I, I've done that with my last name. Ah, it's your last <laughs> because, name. Oh, my Twitter handle, Sarah Lagerquist, was taken. So ah, I, I, I did see, the one it. that is, I officially do, which mm -hmm. is my passport that is spelled differently. Gotcha. Uh, but that was more confusing. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I have different spellings of my last name. Nice, nice. <laughs> well, it's Sarah. It's been great to have you on the show. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Am I seeing you tomorrow? No. Are you not going to Oslo? No, unfortunately not. Oh, sorry. No. For, peop for people listening, this, this show won't come out till well after we've been to Oslo. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to see you in Orlando next will be the next time yes. I see you. Sounds awesome. Because I haven't... Stockholm. Yeah, as in I haven't had my personal invite from uh, Gustav yet and... Uh, well, I actually have, but um, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't decided whether I was going there. I just feel I'm doing so much traveling. Um, but anyhow, let's see what happens. Yeah, it's October too. So yeah, oct I October understand. the 5th, right? October the yep. 5th and then 15th through, of course, in um, Orlando, which, yeah, um, yeah it's going to be full on. Anyhow, before we go, let people know where they can find you online. So uh, you can find me on Twitter. It's Lagerquist Sarah is my handle or LinkedIn, Sarah Lagerquist or my blog, which is saralagerquist.com. Hey, thanks for listening. If you want to get my latest update straight from it into your inbox, I invite you to sign up for my email list so you get notified of posts, how-tos, videos, and other updates that I do. You can do this on my website at nz365guide.com. If you want to look at the show notes for this episode, go to nz365guide.com forward slash 133. See you next week. <laughs>